There is no relationship like the one we have with the land. Where else can we escape from it all? And connect deeply to one another. Where else do we feel so powerful, yet so small? For generations, America's uplands have been a sacred refuge, a point of pride, a playground promising epic adventures and lifelong memories, where every acre has a story to tell or a story waiting to be told. The quality of our lives, our physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health is inseparable from the health of our land and wildlife. We need wild places. And now, they need us. Today, the uplands are some of the most threatened places in the world. And when we lose these places, we lose more than the land itself. We lose wildlife, the pheasants and quail we hunt, the pollinators that fragile ecosystems and farmers alike depend on. We lose the grasslands, wetlands, and forests that nourish the soil and keep water clean. We lose small businesses that depend on hunting and outdoor recreation. We lose our connection to the land and the opportunity for future generations to develop that bond. This is what's at stake. And this is what Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever are working to save. Time is not on our side, and business as usual is not acceptable. We must save America's uplands before it's too late. This is our goal, and this is the vision behind Call of the Uplands. Through this comprehensive campaign, Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever will raise $500 million to protect and restore America's uplands. It's an unprecedented investment in every aspect of our work. And every member of our community has a role to play. Our staff teams, members, volunteers, partners, and our donors. My land is located in the Osage Cuestas along the Kansas-Missouri border. And that was originally grassland. My understanding is that 53 million acres of grassland have been lost just in the last 10 or 15 years to grassland uses. They're putting it to other use, whether it's development or whether it's cropland or something else. Grassland is one of the most endangered habitat types in the world. So the work of Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever intersects directly with that threat to habitat and the ecosystem that we face on the grasslands. My decision to work with Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever was the outgrowth of the relationship that I formed with the organization step by step, starting with the meetings, consulting with a biologist, and uh, thinking about the future. I think that my legacy gift through Pheasants Forever in the area where we live will help to preserve a healthy ecosystem and environment for my family. I think hunting and habitat go hand in hand. If these birds that we care about are declining, we need to do something about it. My experience has been that Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever is the organization in the right place with the right resources and the right motivation to help us do something about that. So my dad taught me how to hunt, why we hunt, and the enjoyment of it, and a love for the outdoors and a passion for the outdoors. 
I think all of us as, as hunters go through phases in our lives, um, in our hunting lives. And I see it in my kids, I see it in their friends that we've taken hunting. I've seen it in my friends who had never hunted, but I take them with me now. And so I just think it teaches them lessons the outdoors does, nature does, um, hunting does, fishing does, that they're not gonna learn in the classroom. They have to experience these things. Growing up, I think about some of my greatest lessons are when I harvested game and the, the responsibility that I had to take care of that and, and everything that it meant, but it taught me responsibility in other areas of life. We need more youth programs. We need more entry points for people to be able to hunt. We need more entry points for people just to experience the outdoors. And those are the things that Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever provide. Anybody that cares anything about the outdoors, this is an ideal opportunity for them to give. Because what they're giving to is not an organization necessarily. They're giving to a legacy, a legacy of a life lived outdoors. I grew up in southwest Montana on a cattle ranch and conservation was a priority and value for my parents and uh, we have a lot of pheasants on our property. So I grew up um, in the outdoors, riding horses, hunting, fishing and began a career right out of college here in Washington DC. And whether you're a biologist uh, implementing farm bill programs or a landowner looking to maximize your business model and create conservation opportunities, it all starts here in Washington. And so if we're not here in Washington on a regular basis, not only our staff, but our volunteers advocating for those programs, we go unheard. A critically important objective that we're working on in Washington, D.C. right now is the recently announced North American Grasslands Act. And this piece of legislation is devoted to the preservation and enhancement of grasslands for upland birds. And we see every day the impact that our volunteers, our chapter members have. When you pick up the phone and make that call or send an email, write a letter to the editor, the more repetition in what you say matters, the more your members hear it and the likelihood that it rises to the top in Washington. If we don't continue to support advocacy work, the programs that we care about that create the places that we wanna be and the outdoor activities that we pursue, the passions that we love are gonna go away. Raise your voice, whatever format you can op-eds, calls, emails, etc. The louder we are, the better our odds are of achieving conservation success. So often I look and say, you know, the generation before you has created this for you. They've created an organization like Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever to ensure the habitat, the wildlife, the pollinators, the involvement in the outdoors moves forward. And now that generation is getting older and less able to do things and now the responsibility falls on your shoulders. I'm getting older. I won't be around forever. I have grandkids. And so, uh, what kind of a world are we going to leave for them? If we don't stay in the game and get in the game with a new and stronger message, we're going to get left behind. And if we're left behind, so are pheasants and quail. As Americans, we're heirs to one of the most successful conservation efforts the world has ever known. The land belongs to all of us. And we owe it to the life it supports and the lives it enriches to restore what has been lost, protect what is here, and pay it forward. Let this 
just die. Don't let your passion die for it. Don't let your kid's passion die for it. Don't let people take this away. If you want conservation to have a fighting chance in the next hundred years, if you want places for your kids and your grandkids to exist outdoors where they can go out and hunt birds with a beautiful open vista, you have to step up and be part of this campaign now. It's time to use our voices, our talents, and our resources to protect our lands and wildlife before we lose them forever. This is the call of the uplands. How will you answer? <laughs>